Hi guys, I hope you're doing very well. In this video, we're gonna see what regularization is, okay? And this is very important. This is a, a technique that is going to help us select the best model. And if you remember, um, in machine learning, what we try to do is to build models that predict, uh, that predict well in new situations. And that means to select models that have a low test error. So our aim here is to have a wide range of models that we can choose from and be able to select the one with the lowest test error. And regularization is going to help us do this because regularization is a technique that allows us to move up and down this flexibility scale, this spectrum of, of models, with one single parameter. We're going to have one single parameter that we're going to call lambda and with that parameter we're going to be able to to look at and test different models and then we will be able to select the best, the one with the lowest test error. So in this video we're going to talk about one specific technique of regularization and that is called reads regression. There are other approaches to regularization like lasso regression and, and here we're going to focus on reads regression but pretty much all the concepts we're going to see in this video are valid for, for other approaches to regularization. Okay, so what is reads regression? Well, in reads regression what we do is to add this term here to the cost function. If you remember the cost function is a function of, of thetas, so it's a function of each fitted model, and it tells us how good or bad one particular fitted model is. In particular, it, it tells us how bad it is. The, the higher the value of the cost function of a certain fit, the, 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 the worse fit that is. Okay, So we want to find the model with the lowest uh, value of the cost function. We want to find the value of the thetas that minimize the cost function. And, and in regularization, we're adding this component. So we had this first component before, which is basically the sum of the squared errors. And we're adding this component, which crucially doesn't depend on the training data. That, that, that seems bizarre, right? It, it's a component that is not looking at the training data at all. It's a component that is the parameter lambda that we're going to choose times the sum of the squared values of the parameters theta. Okay, and this does not depend on the training data at all. And I think it's, it's useful to look at these two components as separate components and each of them is trying to make the values of theta be something, okay? The first component, which is the sum of the squared errors, is, is trying to, to make theta be whatever minimizes the sum of the squared errors. So basically, it's trying to find the theta that fits best the training data. That is what it's trying to do. This is like a fight between these two components and the first component is saying, I want the theta that makes my model fit the training data best, as closely as possible. And the second component, the one we add with regularization, is saying something completely different. Saying, look, I don't care about the data. I'm, I'm utterly indifferent to the training data. What I want is the value of theta to be as low as possible, because that, that's that's how we minimize this sum of the squared values, right? By making all the thetas, well, except theta zero, which we don't regularize, but by making the value of, of pretty much all the thetas equal to zero. So basically, this component is saying, I want thetas to be zero. And how important each of these components is in deciding the final value of, of theta is regulated by this parameter lambda. Okay, if lambda is very low, then uh, this first component will be very strong, and theta will be close to the values that make the model 
fit the training data best and if lambda is high then this second component will be stronger will will play a greater role in deciding the final value of theta and this component is saying I want thetas to be zero okay so let, let's look at one example uh, I've got these 12 points which is our training data and what we're going to do is to fit a polynomial of order 10 okay that's a model with 11 degrees of freedom if we don't regularize at all if lambda is zero so this second component is zero then the model is going to try to fit the training data as closely as possible okay it's not gonna fit it perfectly because there are 12 points and we've got 11 degrees of freedom but but pretty much nearly perfect okay and this is a clear case we know now of overfitting okay as we increase the value of, of lambda and re we regularize a little bit more the second component gains strength and the second component is trying to make the value of the thetas equal to zero except for theta zero remember that so if you look at the values of, of theta now that we're regularizing they're much lower much lower because this second component is gaining strength and if we regularize even more and lambda equals 10,000 in this case then the value of thetas except for theta zero is is pretty much zero and we only have theta zero so what does that mean in terms of, of the model we're fitting well if you think about it the values of theta are are determining the relationship between the inputs and the outputs okay if the value of theta of any theta is is very low then it means that big changes in the input variable will not have a big effect on the output variable so by making thetas small what we're making is is we're building models that capture a weak relationship between the input and the output uh, by by regularizing uh, re regularizing sorry in the in this way we're weakening the relationship between the input and the output that is that is a uh, one intuition but another intuition which i think is is much more uh, rigorous and and important to understand is how all this relates to the flexibility of the model and with the bias and the variance okay and for that what we have to read is the last paragraph of this slide and we're going to spend some time discussing this because it's it's the most important part of this video i would say regularization penalizes the flexibility of a learning model okay it's sensitivity to training data that means if we regularize a lot if lambda has a high value then my model my fit does not depend on the training data so much so basically we're making our fit our learning method less dependent on the training data we're making it less sensitive to the training data and what does that mean in terms of bias and variance well it means that it has a much greater bias and a much lower variance why is that well if you remember bias is a kind of preconception our model has before looking at the data and this component is all about preconception right because it doesn't it doesn't even look at the data it's saying look i want the value of the thetas be small or be zero and i don't care about the data i'm, I'm totally indifferent to the data i just want them to be zero so so that that means the model has really high bias no matter what the data looks like it's gonna want the thetas to be close to zero and it also has well this means that it has low variance for the same reason because if you remember variance relates to how much our model varies when we fit it with different training data sets and we've got now this component that is not looking at the data at all so that means that when we fit this model which is regularized to different training data sets it's not going to change so much because it has a component that is not even looking at the data 
So, so basically, when we use regularization, what we're doing is to increase the bias of our learning method, but also to decrease the variance because our whole learning method is less sensitive to training data. Is that good? Well, we hope so, but we don't really know. I mean, lowering the variance is certainly good because bias and variance are both component of, of the test error. But we also know that we're increasing the bias. Our hope, our hope is that we're going to reduce the variance more than the gain in bias we're getting. And hopefully, if, if that's the case, then uh, regularization will lower the, the test error. That, that's the basic idea. How do we implement this? Well, the implementation is very easy. Now our cost function looks like this. So if we want to use the gradient descent method, um, the gradient just changes very slightly because when you compute the partial derivative of j with respect to each of the thetas, there's only a, a, a very simple term here that appears. So, so the changes we have to make to our gradient descent code to e include regularization are, are really, really simple. And what is even better is that even with regularization in rich regression, we have a closed form solution for theta, which is the one we've got down here. So basically with this um, closed solution, we don't have to use the gradient descent so, so a method. So we don't have to iterate. We don't have to choose the learning rate. And we, we, we should normalize, okay? We should normalize still because otherwise regularization uh, will apply different to uh, different parameters and, and, and the example we saw in the previous slide I normalized the data before so we should normalize but we don't have to iterate or, or choose any learning rate okay so how do we use then regularization in in the general context of, of model selection so basically what we should do is to start with a very flexible model like the polynomial with with degree 10 and start including regularization start increasing we should increase the value of lambda and by increasing the value of lambda what we're doing as we saw is to reduce the variance of our fit and unfortunately we're also increasing the bias but our hope is that at least initially the reduction in variance will be greater than the increase in the bias, so the low, the, the test error will, will decrease, okay? So we're moving from right to left in this, in this graph, and well, there will be a point beyond which the reduction in, in variance does not compensate the increase in bias anymore, and the test error will increase. But the whole point of this is that we've got now a method by which with one single parameter, which is lambda, we can slide up and down this spectrum of model flexibility. So basically, the algorithm uh, would be the following. Okay, if we have a data set, what we should do first is to divide it into two sets. I'm going to call them selection and test. Um, the role of selection is help us decide what is the best value of lambda, what is the best value of the model flexibility, what is the, the value of, of lambda that is going to give us the lowest test error. That is the role of selection. And the role of test is to give us an estimate, to help us uh, compute an estimate of the test error of the model we're going we're gonna to give in the end. Okay. So what we're going to do is for different values of lambda, for different flexibilities, we're going to use cross-validation with the selection data set to estimate the test error of the model. Okay, As we discussed in our previous video, this will be a, an estimation that is slightly biased upwards as an estimate of a model um, fitted with with the whole data set of, of selection, but but the bias is usually not not very 
very large. So, so that should be okay. Once we've got the best value of lambda, and that is the value of lambda that has the lowest uh, test error, what we should do is to use the whole data set in selection to fit a model. Okay, and, and then we would like to have an estimation of the test error of that model. And for that, that's why we held out the test data set. So now we can use the validation approach, if you like, to compute an estimate of the test error of, of the model we just fitted. One could be tempted to say, okay, but why do we need the test data set if we already have a, an estimate of the test error, which is precisely the one we computed with using cross-validation with the selection data set. But that is not a good estimate. That is not a good estimate um, for, for a subtle but very important reason. And the thing is that um, we chose the optimum value of, of lambda because it was the one with the lowest test error. It was the winner, the one with the lowest test error. And and in this selection process, there is a certain random component. And in any competition with a certain random component, it is very likely that the winner was somewhat, somewhat lucky. And this is the case as well. So it is very likely that the, this random component in the selection of the optimum value of lambda uh, was favorable to the winner, to the optimum value of, of lambda. The, the optimum value of lambda got somewhat lucky in that selection. Why? Because, because it was the winner. So in order to, to eliminate the effect of this random, of this luck, of this random component, what we should do is to, to estimate the test error of that uh, model again with with another data set that has that we have never used before this is subtle i understand that i haven't explained it really well at all uh, but if if you want to read more about it i you, you can click on that link regression towards the mean and and i hope it, it will be clearer so what we've seen here is is for regression but for classification problems we have pretty much the, the same the same approach. We would add this second component to the cost function, the same component, and then uh, we can use gradient descent in this case to, to find the values of theta that minimize the new cost function. And we can do it with the gradient descent method, or if you like, you can use more sophisticated functions like fminunc in MATLAB or or, or other functions in other languages that that minimize uh, functions, and for that we would have to to implement our cost function, uh, a program that that returns the value of the cost function and also the gradient, because as you know, most uh, optimization methods that work numerically uh, make use of of the gradient. So. With this, we conclude the unit about model assessment and model selection. I hope it's reasonably clear. This is a really important topic in, in machine learning. So, so please make sure you understand it. And, and in any case, thank you so much for watching this video. And, and hopefully I'll, I'll see you on, on the next one. Okay, take care, guys. See you later.